Well hello, this is Neil Cowley from MakeLightReal.com and I'd love to show you how to build a realistic uh, old school frame effect. And these effects uh, came about when people used to have to use wet plate negatives, Polaroids, and other sloppy emulsion type uh, <laughs> ways to record the image. Most of the time we do it with these neat little digital cameras, but it's nice to give the feel of a handmade object to your prints. And you can do that now, again, very quickly, with a digital media printer, such as an Epson, a Canon, and choose a media type that has a softer, uh, older, more traditional feel. Uh, Inova paper makes some great stuff. Uh, Moab paper makes some great stuff. Papers with a little bit of texture to themselves or papers that are just matte and nice and heavy, they have a wonderful feeling to them. Uh, a wonderful hand, it's often called. So let me take you through the uh, layers I'm working with in my document. First you'll see here is the one adjusted layer. And that is an adjustment made by the one action. And there it is after. Following that, we have the saturate layer, which is actually being used to desaturate. Let me show you the curves in lab. No changes to the lightness. The A channel is has its contrast lowered. The B channel also has its contrast lowered. So it's a pretty even across the color spectrum desaturation. Um, now that gets to the point it gets the image to the point tonally where it's uh, pretty much what I want to work with. Now to build up that uh, sort of hand touched feel, um, we'll add a frame. And this one is in normal uh, view mode. The layer type is normal. But I've cut out the white so that only the black remains. And then I've masked that slightly with a layer. Um, I'm currently using the Extensus Photo Frames collection. Uh, the software is worthless on a <laughs> Intel Mac, but the images are just JPEGs, so that's all that matters. And I have them in a catalog that I can view. And so here is the base layer. Now, when you're creating these frames, uh, you know, Extensus. It, their set is pretty good, uh, it has a lot of great effects, um, but they're not realistic in the sense that they're flat, they've been scanned. And so what you really want to build up is uh, a 3D effect that a real print would have if light had passed through it. And now to do that, the layer modes, the layer blend modes in Photoshop will help you out. So next, on top of my uh, darkening mask, which is in normal mode, but multiply or hard light or overlay also works well, <clears throat> is another frame with the layer mode of screen to lighten things up. And now if I change it to normal, you'll see that it's the straight image from Extensus and the corner edges, let's zoom in here, the corner edges are lighter, the middle is dark. So when I move it to screen blending mode, we have a kind of a funky interaction between the dark and the light. Here in this area, you'll see it happening as well. Now, we'll go back to the overall image, and I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's cool. Moving on up, the chain, I uh, painted the edges a little bit darker, and then I thought their faces needed just a kiss of light, so I painted in a little dodging. One overall vignette, and then this background zone just felt a little empty and flat to me, like just drawing a little bit too much negative energy. So the solution that I came up with was to add a texture. Um, 
this texture is from TextureKing.com. It's one I've been using a lot lately. It's actually, which I love, it's actually fiberglass insulation. But the tone of it is great for t portraits. It has a very uh, sort of um, brush-like texture once it's applied. And then I felt her shirt was a little too red from the white, from the texture. So I desaturated that just a bit. And that overall is how I built up the image. And the texture helps to draw together the sort of handmade feel between the edge, the frame, and the center of the picture. If the picture overall were uh, just too finely tuned, uh, smooth, like the digital era, uh, it wouldn't have that traditional era feel. And now print it out on a sheet of Innova um, uh, 300 pound paper. This will be uh, a nice lovely piece just to send them uh, as a little thank you and so that they can get the, the feel of how this looks. Because that's also an important step for your clients. Um, I have not been able to sell images that I display like this solely on the web. Uh, I have to send them a sample and once they feel it and they can see it and it has that warm feel in their hands then they want to print to frame or they want to print to stick on their wall or whatever. So, so in closing remember that one size never fits all but the one action can help you fully express your image by putting all the tools as close as possible to your fingertips. So I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial on fr building frames, and I hope you find more information useful to your creative soul at makelightreal.com.